How's it going everyone? So today we're going to go over an Amazon problem called minimum time difference. The description says given a list of 24 hour clock time points in hour minutes format, find the minimum minutes difference between any two time points in the list. Our input for this problem is always going to be a list of strings where the strings are represented in hour minute format and they are separated by a colon. All right, so let's go over an example. We have the strings 3 o'clock, 1 o'clock, and 23.30. In this problem, we need to return the minimum difference in minutes. So our first task is to convert these strings that we have into integers where they are represented as minutes. So let's take a look at 3 o'clock. This first part would be our hours. The second part would be our minutes. So to convert this to minutes, all we have to do is do 3 times 60 because there's 60 minutes in an hour, and then we add zero because zero, zero is just zero minutes. And that equates to 180 minutes. For one o'clock, we would take the first hour, so we'd say one times 60 plus the minutes here, which is zero, and that equals 60 minutes. And then finally, we have 23 hours, so 23 times 60 plus 30 minutes, and that would be 1410. So the second part to this problem is we need to map all of these integer values that we calculated into an array, specifically using what's known as bucket sort. So there are a total of 24 hours in a day, and that equates to 1,440 minutes. So what we want to do is we want to create an array of that size. So it's going to go all the way up to 1,440. And then what we want to do is map these integer values that we've calculated inside of this array, where the index is the actual value that we calculated. So let's say we label all of the indexes in 1440. I obviously won't write all of them out, but we will go up to 60 because we have a 60 here, right? And then we're gonna go up to 180. I know this is not spaced correctly. And then finally, 1410. So we have 180, 60, 1410. Now all we need to do is map those indices to true. So every other index that we didn't label as true would be false. So 0, 1, all the way up to 60, 60 to 180 would all be false, and then 180 to 410, those would be false, and then finally 1410 to 1440, those are all false as well. Okay, so I wrote this out a little bit cleaner. This next step that we need to do is actually calculate the minimum difference between all of our time points. And obviously, all of these trues now are in order because we pretty much sorted using the indices of our array. So the first thing we're going to need is a min variable. So our min variable, as expected, is going to keep track of the minimum difference that we come across. And by default, it should start at whatever integer.max value is. Additionally, we're going to need three other variables, prev, cur, and first. The first variable is going to keep track of the very first true that we find inside of our array. And then our prev and cur, those are going to actually compute the difference between each other. So we're going to be shifting these pointers forward as we're iterating over our large array. So we're going to start iterating from index 0. Anytime we encounter a false in that position, we are going to skip it. So we get false on 0, 1, and then all the way up to index 60. Once we get to index 60, we see that we finally have a true, and that means we need to go look at our first and previous variables. Both of them are set to a negative one index, so what that tells us is we need to set both first and previous 
to our current index that we're looking at. So we set both first and previous to index 60, and now we can continue iterating. So we're gonna iterate all the way up to 180. We'll get another true, and now we need to set 180 to be our current. Now, since both current and previous have a value, we need to compute the difference between them. So if we did 180 minus 60, that would be 120. And since 120 is less than infinity, which is our current minimum value, we can now overwrite that min variable. The final step is we need to move previous to be whatever current currently is. So we have our previous set to 180. Our current is still set to 180, but we're not gonna do another comparison until we get to another true in our array. So we're gonna continue iterating all the way up to 1410. We see we have a true, so that means we need to set current to be equal to 1410. Then we compute the difference between current and previous. So we do 1410 minus 180 which is 1230, and we compare that difference to our minimum. Obviously, 180 is still less than 1230, so we don't need to update. And then lastly, we set our previous equal to whatever current is. So we have our previous variable set to 1410, and now we can just continue iterating. And as you can see, we get to the end of our array, but there's still one last check we need to do. We still need to compare 1410 to 60 because the array still goes back around. We still need to check the minimum difference between the very last time point that we had and the very first time point that we had. So this is where this first variable comes into play. So like I mentioned before, there are a total of 1440 minutes in a single day. So all we have to do to get the difference is we do 1440 minus our very last element, which would be 1410, and that would be 30. And then we simply add whatever first currently has, which would be 60, and 30 plus 60 is 90. So the minimum difference between 1410 and 60, since it goes back around, would be 90. And now we just need to compare 90 to our minimum. Since 90 is less than 120, our new minimum is 90. So our final answer should be 90 minutes because 1410 and 60 are closest to each other. So we are given a list of strings called time points and we need to return an integer representing the minimum difference in minutes. So the first thing we wanna do is create an array, our buckets, to store all of the minutes. And this is a Boolean array, like I mentioned, so we only have true or false values. Now we need to iterate over our time points. Now that we have the actual time point, we need to convert this string to an integer represented as minutes. So the first thing we want to do is we can just split by the colon. So we can say string t equals time point dot split by our colon, and then let's extract the hours in minutes. So we can say int hours equals integer dot parse, whatever the first index has, and then int minutes is whatever the second, or the first index has. And now we just need to compute the total amount of minutes. So we can say int total equals our hours, times 60 plus our minutes. And with this total, we can now set our bucket index. So we could say bucket total is now equal to true. There is one other edge case that we still have to consider, however. In the scenario that we have two time points inside of our array that are the same. So for example, say we had one o'clock and one o'clock inside of our array. The minimum difference between those times would be zero, and there's no better answer than zero. So what we can do here is we could say if our bucket total, if this is already true, then we can just return zero. We know that we can never get better than a minimum difference of zero. Now we just need to create all of the variables that we talked about. 
So we had a min variable and we initialize this to whatever integer dot max value is. We had a first variable, a prev, and a cur. And now we're going to iterate over our bucket and calculate all of the minimum differences. So as we're iterating over our bucket array, we want to make sure we only look at true values. So we can say if our bucket at index i is true, then we perform whatever logic that we need to do. And now we just need to set our first and previous because they're currently negative one. So we could say if prev is equal to negative one, that means nothing has been set for it yet. So we can just say prev is equal to i because i is the index in our bucket that we calculated up here, which was our total. And then also we can say first is also equal to i. So our previous will continuously be moved, but our first variable we are not going to touch again until we are outside of this for loop. And now we start computing the differences. So if this is not true, if previous was already set, we now need to set current. So we would say current would be equal to i, and now we compute the difference. So we could say min is equal to math.min between min and whatever current minus previous is. And then finally, we set our previous variable to whatever current currently is. So we'll say prev is equal to cur. And once we're done looping over this, this is where that edge case comes in, where we have to compare the very last element with the very first element. So to do that, we could say return math.min between min, and we need to get the difference between 1440 and our very last element. So 1440 minus current, because current was our last element that we set on line 20. And we're going to do current plus our first. And that is all the code that we need to solve this problem. So let's just make sure that our solution still works. This is supposed to be parse int and parse int. Oh, another mistake. This needs to be bucket dot length, not dot size. All right, let's submit one more time. And now it works. Our time complexity is going to be big O of n, where n is the number of time points that we have. On line four, we need to iterate over all of these time points and store them inside of our bucket. Our space complexity, however, is going to be constant. It may seem that line three is creating extra space, but because we're always setting the size to 1440, it's never going to be less than that. It's never going to be more than that. So regardless of our input size, this bucket will always be capped at 1440. So that's it for this video, guys. Thank you guys for watching. Please feel free to like and subscribe if you like these types of videos. I plan to release a lot more over the next coming weeks. So I'll see you guys in the next one.